In the previous video, Data Part 1, we walked through working with data collections and how to both add data to and list data from a collection. If you haven't seen that video yet, we build on the app we created in it, so we would recommend you go and watch that one before you continue with this video. In this video, we will instead be working with individual instances of data in a collection and talking about how to both edit and remove them. To get started, I'll create a new page that I name Edit Person. On this page, I'll add three input boxes, one for each field of the data model we created in the Data Part 1 video, name, phone number, and note. Then lastly, I'll add a button component. When the UI is done, we're going to head back to our home page, which you'll remember in the last video, we made into a page that has a list view that displays people we've added to a data collection. Let's say we want to be able to edit a specific person from our list. To do this, we want to load the edit page when a specific person or item in our list is pressed in our app. Therefore, we'll edit the item click event on the list component. When the visual coding window opens, I'll use the page.load coding block to load our new edit page. First, I'll map the edit person page to the page argument of the coding block, but we're not done yet. We need to tell our edit page which data it will populate its input fields with when it loads, which in this case we want to be the information associated with the individual person pressed on our list. I'll need to pass an identifier to the page to accomplish this which can be easily done by taking the event source ID value and mapping it to the past ID argument of the coding block. This will take the ID of the individual row we have pressed on and then pass it as an argument to the page being loaded by the page.load block. With that set up, we can close the visual coding window, save the page, and then try out our script in the live preview of the home page. As you can see, the edit person page was loaded However, our input fields are still empty. Let's fix that. The easiest way to accomplish this is to grab the data item from our people collection that we clicked on in the list and then populate the input fields on the edit page with the data from that data item. Begin by opening the data tab and click add a new data object. This time, we'd like to grab a single instance of a data object from our data collection. Therefore, we'll choose load single item. For our model, I'll choose the people model that we created in the last video. Our data source will still be the people collection, but this time I would like to apply a filter to be able to grab only the item I want from the collection. The default setting should already be doing exactly what we want it to. It will only select items that have an ID property with the same value as the past ID argument. The past ID argument has the value of the ID of the list item that was clicked on or pressed on, as we configured the page.load block earlier to set the past ID to the ID of the item pressed. In other words, we will only get the item from our collection that we'll be actually clicking or pressing on in the list. Perfect. Since we are only grabbing one item of data from our list, we don't have to configure any sort of sorting and may therefore just click next to continue to the next step where we'll name our data object. I'm going to call this person and then click OK to save the data object. If we have a look at the configuration of this object, we can see that it has the people model as its data model, it is one single item, and it's loaded from the people collection. We can also see that we have set our criteria so that the ID field is equal to the past ID. Great. Now let's head back to the Design tab. Minimize the Components section in our toolbox and instead expand the Data section. Hit the Refresh button to refresh the list to also list our newly created data object. As you can see, we now have the Person data object there. If we open up the data object, we can see all of the properties that the data model associated with this object has. Now, let us select the name input field of our page. To set the value of this input box to the name of the person object we've just looked at, 
we need to simply drag the name field from the person data object and drop it on the value property of the input field. The value property of the input field now says data.person.name and that means the value will be set to the value of the name of the data object named person. That was a bit of a tongue twister and there's a lot going on, but let's reinforce the concept by repeating this twice more for our other input fields, mapping the appropriate values from our data object called person to the value field in the property list for these input fields. Now we should see that our text fields have been populated with the values of the person we clicked in our list, just like we want. Now we just need to make it so that the button on our edit page can edit and resave values into our collection from the edit page. Edit the click event in the properties of the save button. Now we're going to use a string copy coding block to copy the values from our input field to our data item. I'll copy the value from the name input field and store it in the name field of the person object. Then I'll do the same with the other two fields. Once we've updated the data object with the values from our input fields, I can simply save it back to the collection with the data collection save coding block. I specify the people collection as the collection and the person data object as the object. Finally, we can use a page.load block to load the home page again when our data is saved. Or from the end user's perspective when they're done editing an item. When we're all finished up with our coding script, let's go ahead and exit the visual coding window, save the page that we've been working on, and let's try editing some details in the preview window, then pressing save. We should be taken back to the home page, and an updated list reflecting our edits should be displayed. To summarize everything we've done, first, we sent the ID of the item we clicked in the list by sending the event source ID as the past ID argument to our edit page. Then, we grab the person that had that ID from our people collection. We use this data object to populate the input fields on our edit page. Lastly, we updated the data object with modified values from our input fields and let our save button resave these edits into the data collection. So far in this series on working with data in Acuro, we've made sure we have the tools and knowledge to add data to a collection, view data in a collection, and lastly, view and manipulate individual items of data from those collections. In the next video, we'll kick our data knowledge into high gear by talking about how you can use visual coding to perform advanced mapping and filtering actions with your data.